bricks this time. So giving it another go, hopefully with sound this time. I don't, um, we got sound? Yeah. We do? We have sound? <laughs> so, um, we apologise to those of you who tried to tune in and uh, ended up with a Muppet and no, no volume. We are wanting to welcome our Kela in Long Island, New York, Baruch and Kerry and their Mishpacha. We welcome you. I want to welcome those of you who join us from North Carolina, um, who faithfully watch each week. We uh, love having you join us that way. Those of you who watch from Australia, other parts of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and those of you who are watching us from Germany and other parts of the world, we want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom together. So the Mishpacha here at Beit Melech Aotearoa, New Zealand and Auckland here are going to do that for you for a second time because we did it once already without sound and now we're hoping you'll actually get to hear it. So, three, two, one. Shabbat Shalom! Oh, wow. You're fortunate that this was the one you ought to hear because it was definitely much better than the first one. Um, tonight's a little bit different. We're go we are going to have our Hebrew worship music to begin with and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Shemitah, what it means, and then about my Shemitah that I'll be taking and also about um, the change of direction for Beth Melech uh, as an international ministry going forward. And we want to give you an opportunity who are watching with us online to email us any questions or any words of support that you might have for that. And we just ask you to do that by emailing bethmalek at gmail.com and we'll respond to those queries. And then for our family here, Amishpacha here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we're going to have a time just to talk together about uh, the changes that are coming up after we have worshipped together and I've shared a little bit about the Shemitah. So thank you for joining us tonight and family in the room, thank you for, for joining us. Um, and as always, I'll try and keep up with those of you who make comments online and just say hi for as long as I'm able to do that. And uh, I see that a lot of you have tuned back in. Shabbat Shalom Leanne, good to see you there. Isabel, good to see you. Uh, Don, see you there. Shabbat Shalom. And there's a couple of people in the room that, uh, <laughs> that I see there too, and we can all guess who they are. <laughs> Why is everybody looking at Shannon? <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.
is of mine. Shalom, Lenith Hickey. We see you there. Shabbat Shalom, Ruth. Lovely to have you with us. Look to you, already. 
cry out to you.
extra singers and thank you Azaria and Bethany and thank you Anesu and Daniel. Okay, so um, I don't see any further comments there on the stream, so I'm just going to leave that for now. And uh, I just want to let those of you who are watching from other parts of the world who are part of our international community, um, that after I've done this brief teaching and then explained where we're headed as a ministry, where I'm headed over the next short while and where we're headed as, as a ministry, we're going to offer our community here a chance to respond to that and uh, to share to ask questions 
uh, but we're going to do that part offline. However, we want to offer you the opportunity to ask questions, to share. So if you'd like to send us a message or ask us a question, we'd encourage you to do that by email, and you need to write that email to bethmalek at gmail.com bethmalek at gmail.com and I'll spell it out because it might be difficult for some people b-e-t-h-m-e-l-e-k-h at and I think you can get the gmail.com part okay um, many of you know that at the beginning of the year uh, Julia and I had been away uh, for the summer a little bit at a beach that our family's gone to since my mother was seven years old. So, so a place of solace for us, a place where we go to be alone with the Lord and to listen to his voice. And as we camped there beside the ocean, uh, we did hear the Lord speak. And the Lord spoke to us about taking a Shemitah. And for those of you who who don't know what that, that means, Shemitah is commonly known in English as a sabbatical, and it comes from this idea of a sabbatical year, which is commanded in the Torah uh, to Israel. And in a moment here, we're going to read that one of the primary scriptures relating to that. It's actually detailed in several parts of the Torah, but I'm just going to read one particular section of scripture to you, and then I'm going to help you understand how, in principle, it also applies to us today. So I'll explain the context, then I'll explain the principle. And so the Lord spoke to Julia and I about this, and we did, you'll remember if you were here at the beginning of the year, we asked you guys to pray with us as to what that might look like. And if you were here last week, you heard me say that I had my own ideas of what that might look like, and I tried to uh, control the narrative, if you like, but... Um, as my health has progressively declined and I prayed about this, the Lord said to me, I've already given you the solution. You're, you're asking me for healing for something that I've already given you the solution for. And the problem here is that you've just decided to try and make it work your way instead of doing it my way. And, and what's your way, Lord? Stop. So when the Lord instructs you to stop, I've got some good advice for you. Don't plan your stop. Don't try and convince the Lord that your stop is going to look like this. Just stop. Um, also, on the other end of that, because obviously I'm not going to be on Shemitah indefinitely, <laughs> Uh, it's a very specific amount of time commanded in Scripture. When we come out of the other end, things are going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to speak to that in a minute. But first, let's take a look at a Scripture that has been very important to me um, as I've wrestled with what's going to happen next from Shmod, from Sefer Shmod, from the Torah, Exodus 14, 14. Mercy himself, yod hey vav hey, will fight for you all. And you all, remain silent, keep still. Okay, and why do I say you all? Because the Hebrew is plural. It doesn't, it's not said in the singular. These words were said to an individual, but they were meant for all of God's people. I read it again, mercy himself will fight for you all, and you all remain silent, keep still. And so I ask myself, um, if this is both a personal instruction and a community instruction, <clears throat> what does that mean as the Lord speaks it to me? This arises when we try to take control of the battle for ourselves, just as it did in the context of this scripture. And we begin to be stressed by what the battle might entail. And God comes along and says, there's no need to be stressed. I will fight for you. You need only be still. Now, <clears throat> if God speaks this 
to a leader and he doesn't obey, the community is affected. If God speaks this to a community and they don't obey, the leader and the community are affected. But either way, this should not inspire in us any kind of condemnation, but it should inspire in us the understanding that we can put our trust completely and utterly upon the creator of the universe who calls us sons and daughters in his son, Yeshua. And no matter how insurmountable we think what's coming is, he built the mount. He's already surmounted it. And so that's been a really special scripture as I've continued to journey with this very difficult decision. Um, and I think it's important that I say this very difficult decision. But, you know, I would like you to think that um, I'm dusting off my feet and running to the golf course. <laughs> That's not what this is about. Okay. First of all, Daniel knows it's not about that because he's seen me play golf. <clears throat> this, this is not about me going, oh, phew, I'm out of here. This has been an extremely difficult decision to make. Uh, for me and I think that Julia would agree that it's been an extremely difficult decision for us to make as a family what does Shemitah mean? Shemitah means release I guess synonymous with being set free release, being set free the Shemitah year is also known by the name Ha Shavit which is a way of saying the seventh the seventh. So Shemitah, it means release, and it's the seventh year. Interesting. Those of you who understand the Jewish calendar will know that we're in a Shemitah year. 5782, which began uh, at Rosh Hashanah last year, in 2021, began a Shemitah year. When we were in Israel in uh, 2019, was it, Julia? Before the COVID came and kiboshed our Israel trips. Punk. When we were last in Israel, we were in a place called Sfat. No one say pardon me. <laughs> Sfat, uh, in English people call it Safed. That's not even close to how it looks in Hebrew, but there you go. Sfat is a city in northern Galilee. It's on a mountain sort of top and it's an ancient ancient uh, town um, and while we were there we went to a winemaker who is making wine in the ancient way in the basement of his home the basement of his home has an old dried up well that's been there for 2,000 years and he still makes wine in it But he showed us a whole lot of pictures of the last Shemitah year he had, had observed, where he had left the ground fallow, left the vines unpicked. And he is one of a number in Israel who still literally observe the Shemitah commandment in the land. They make up very few of Israel's farmers and growers, but they are there still observing this Shemitah, this resting of the land. And he will tell you that the loss of income is not a concern to him. Why, why on earth would he tell you that? You've got to keep in mind that this is his income. He's got sons to provide for. He's a family man. This is his business. He'll tell, he'll tell you the loss of income doesn't concern him because when he does it the previous year's harvest is abundant enough to sustain the year without harvest and he has a, enough prepared produce to sustain him for the year the next year so what's he explaining he's explaining that in practical terms what god says he will do in the torah he still does for people who keep the Shemitah. Now, this man is not a follower of Yeshua. 
but he's keeping the command of God. And God is a debtor to no one. It takes a great deal of trust for a person to stop for a year. What about income? Right? What am I going to do? How am I going to provide? So that takes me to the scripture. Let's read the scripture. And I've, I've just cut out a few verses in the middle just to try and keep it concise for you. But this sums it up. Vaikwa, Leviticus 25, 2-7, and then Leviticus 25, 20-22. Here, here's what Hashem instructs Eswai. Speak to the sons of Eswai and say to them, When you come into the land which I am going to give you, then the land shall have a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its produce. But during the seventh year the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall not sow your field nor prune your vineyard. You shall not reap the harvests after growth. And you shall not gather your grapes of untrimmed vines. The land shall have a sabbatical year. All of you shall have the Sabbath produce of the land as food. For yourself, your male and female slaves, and your hired worker, and your foreign resident, those who live as strangers among you. Even your cattle and the animals that are in your land shall have all its produce to eat. So when the growers and farmers take a Shemitah, it's not only a gift of rest to them, it's a gift of rest to the whole community. This will sound ironic in today's 24-7 Western world, but by stopping, the Shemitah actually provides more produce. So think about that. God, our Western world says, never stop, keep producing. In God's econ economy, he says, stop regularly, be blessed abundantly. Never stop, keep producing, burn out. Or stop regularly, be blessed abundantly, begin again. Goes on to say, but if you say, I'm not the only one who said this, I know it. But if you say, what are we going to eat? Julia and I had this conversation with the Lord. <laughs> oh yeah, Shemitah, good one. How are we going to do that? What are we going to eat in the seventh year if we do not sow nor gather in our produce? Then I will so order my blessing for you in the sixth year that it will bring forth the produce for three years. When you are sowing the eighth year, you can still eat old things from the produce, eating the old until the ninth year when its produce comes. If you rest for one year, God will give you three years worth of produce, of blessing. And just to help you guys understand how Julia and I have seen God's faithfulness in this, I was coming to grips with the fact that I'm going to have to take this sabbatical. I have to be obedient to the Lord. We arrived back into New Zealand a couple of weeks ago, and we're barely here a few hours, and Julia gets a call where someone is offering a job position uh, much higher up in her workplace and for three times three times more money like sorry three times what I make each year that was how big the pay rise was three times what I make in a year. The 
The Shemitah commanded to Israel was for the benefit of the land and the people of Israel, both individually and collectively. To observe Shemitah as a community means to rely on God's provision for all, rather than relying on the mechanism of human effort to create provision. Shemitah is an opportunity to trust God and his provision, to let go of control and rely on his order. To let go of control and rely on his order. Shemitah by nature is a commandment not only to the community but also to the individual. The contextual meaning as it relates to Israel and the land can also be seen to provide a spiritual principle applicable to the life of every believer. In the ministry of the kingdom of God, an individual can become weary over a period of time. The principle of Shemitah applies not only to farming land and tending vines, and metaphorically speaking, to the work of the kingdom. Sorry, it not only applies to farming land and tending vines, but it also applies, metaphorically speaking, to the work of the kingdom, and for that matter, to any form of work. In our modern world, we're not all farmers and vine tenders, herders and cattle rangers, but we do all work. We do all have different types of vocations. If the individual fails to keep Shemitah, the community ultimately suffers. In the case of a leader, if a leader fails to keep Shemitah, he is not only harming his own health, he is also setting a bad example for the community. So essentially what I'm saying there in cloaked language is, Yaakov got told to keep Shemitah at the start of the year. He was disobedient to the Lord halfway through the year. He decided to change his mind because he realized he wasn't just sinning against himself, but he was sinning against his family and against you. From the beginning of creation, God established a rhythm of rest for his people. The weekly Shabbat is the seventh day, a day of rest. The seventh month is a Shabbat month, a month of rest. The seventh year is a Shabbat year, a year of rest. And the seventh of the seven-year cycles is the 50th year, a compounded year of rest, freedom, blessing, known as the Jubilee, a year of release. Today, within both modern society and within the body of believers, an exponential growth in mental health issues and general stress-related health issues has exceeded all expectations and has shined a light on our failure to observe God's commanded rest appointments. Impossible to disagree with that. First of all, because statistically we know it's a fact, and second of all, because all of us in this room have personally experienced the damage that failing to rest does on us, on our families, on our communities. When we fail to obey God's command to rest, we harm ourselves, and the overflow of self-harm is community harm. Thank God that if we repent... And keep his rest. He is faithful and just to forgive us in Messiah and manifest the benefits of rest upon us. So God's not this terrible ogre that goes, oh, you didn't obey me straight away. Oh, you're obeying me now, are you? Well, tough titty. You're not getting anything. That's not how he works. You've repented. You're obeying me now. You know, in my experience, he doesn't go, okay, well, I'm going to calculate the number of days since your disobedience to now. I'm going to ping you for that, and I'll give you whatever's left over in the last part of your obedience. My experience is 
he says, you've repented? Hallelujah. Can you hear that? That's the party getting started. Son, go and get the best calf. Bring it over. So I recommend repentance. He's the best dad in the world. Just go to him. Apologize. Tell him you want to act in repentance. Good luck if you get halfway toward him before he swallows you up in his arms. After much prayer, and, and what I'm going to say now is the letter, essentially, that we sent out to all of the local community here via email this week, but I want to say it live online to our international community because, um, as you know, the ministry has grown where we have a number of people from around the world who feel very connected to what we're doing, and I believe we'll continue to be connected to what we're doing as we move forward. Um, and that's why I referred to us as an international ministry, and I think that's something that the local body here uh, should be commended for, because without your support over the last eight years, and without your continuing participation in what we've been doing, we would not have come to this place, which I believe the Lord has brought us to in a very natural way. After much prayer and having sought the godly counsel of our leadership community, and that's our international leadership community, which includes uh, Baoch and Kerry Hudkins and Greg Hutana and Julia, um, and other trusted faith mentors, so other believers in our lives who have mentored us, Julia and I have concluded that the Lord is leading us and Beth Malik in a new direction. As you know, the Lord has spoken to me about taking a Shemitah, a sabbatical, but I've been putting it off, trying to make plans and making demands of God as to what it should look like. I've been struggling with the beginning of burnout symptoms. You guys might ask me, how do you know you're struggling with the beginning of burnout symptoms? is because I've gone full burnout twice in ministry before now. So if you've ever done that, you never want to go back there. When you start noticing the beginning of them, run, Luke, run. You know, it's... It, <laughs> so I've been experiencing these over the last three or four months and they've been getting exponentially worse and God hasn't stopped them and now you know why. Why would he stop them? They'll stop when I stop. Having been questioned by several trusted believers on this matter, including Bawolf, Greg, Julia, I realized that a great portion of my stress has resulted in my present condition, sorry, that a great portion of the stress that's resulted in my present condition is a product of the pastoral care load over the last eight years. Although unseen by many, it's nonetheless been a significant burden. The Lord has essentially answered my desperate prayers, as I said, by saying that I need to do what he instructed me to do, and that's to stop. Short story long, Julia and I, had that was a joke, Julia and I have talked it over with our international leadership community and we're all decided that I should not become a comedian. Um, and they have all concluded that while Beth Malik as a ministry is not ending, the season that involves me pastoring a local congregation is coming to an end. For those of you online, it's raining real loud here. I'm just going to let it rain for a bit. Going forward and following my time of rest, the sabbatical, 
we see Beth Malek continuing as a ministry offering sound biblical teaching as a resource for Messiah following Jews and Gentiles. Julia and I will continue to make sharing faith in Yeshua with Jews our primary ministry, and I will continue to be obedient to the call on my life concerning the sound teaching of Scripture to all who will receive it. However, I will not continue to work outside my calling in a pastoral role. Okay, and that might be hard for some people to hear. As you know, I am called as a teacher of the word, and though I do love people, I'm not a pastor, I'm a teacher. And I don't know about you guys, but <clears throat> I don't want the plain engineer spending part of his day straightening up the seats inside the plane before it takes off. I would rather he focused on his job and got it right so that the plane doesn't crash. With this in mind and at God's direction, following my sabbatical, we will be pivoting the ministry to focus on teaching the scriptures and we're going to probably do that through quality media um, and other forms, literature, quality media, things that people can use uh, trusted material that people can use in smaller groups in their homes as kehilot all over the world. It, do, it doesn't need to be anything big. What we're looking to do uh, is to just provide sound biblical teaching to the wider community. Why are we looking to do that and focus on that? I talked about the plane engine and the seats. And if the hostess forgets to sweep the seats clean, not so bad because you still get to where you're going. If the engineer neglects part of his job while he's getting the seats clean and your plane crashes, well, that's a biggie. You might have remembered in the book of Acts that as the church grew, the Greek Jews and the Jews of the land had an argument over their widows not being looked after properly. And they came to the leaders and they said, you need to deal with this. They're not, the Hebrew Jews or the Jews of the land aren't giving us Greek Jews from the diaspora the money we need for our widows. Peter, Yaakov, what are you going to do about it? And they said, it's not good that we should leave the teaching of the word to wait on tables. And so that job was given to those who were gifted to do that job. And what do you know? Because an opportunity arose, they stepped up and they did the job. But what if the leaders who were supposed to be devoted to teaching the word had said, no, we'll, you know what, we'll just put that aside for now and go and sort out these social problems. Friends, I don't think we'd have the New Testament. And I, th I think today in a church and a body of believers worldwide where we are 80% Bible illiterate and where if we do have scripture taught to us in the community, it's taught like a pet talk, an add-on. It's usually, it's usually some kind of philosophy where a couple of verses is attached to it to make it legit. There are very few communities where the word of God is taught line upon line precept upon precept and so we won't put this down we won't put this down my aim is the way we've taught through books of, of the scripture my personal aim and it has been for a very long time is unless I cark it or the Lord comes first I aim to do what we've done with the book so far to every book of the Bible. So, Beth Malik is not ending. We are coming to a goal and we are beginning again. It's going to look a little bit different for some of you guys. So, I think I've kind of explained the rest of that and I'll just have a quick 
Okay. We value your prayers and support. <clears throat> We've valued your prayers and support since the beginning. We value you. So, not an easy decision for us to make. As has always been the case, Beth Malak, in its continuing work, will not be asking for monetary support or using manipulation to invoke giving under compulsion. However, as the leaders have rightly said to me, we should at least give you an opportunity to partner with us financially if that's what you want to do. If that's what you want to do, there'll be ways you can do that. You can email us, you can put money into our bank account, it's on the website. But we're not asking you for money. What we're saying is, if those of you who are passionate about what we're doing want to partner with us financially, you are free to do that. We're not stopping you from doing that. But it still finishes with me saying, we don't need your money and I'm not asking you for it. God has never failed to provide for this ministry. And he won't stop now. We will continue to function as a ministry. This is not the end, as I said. It's the goal and a new beginning. It is the end of the Auckland Congregational Meetings, but it's not the end of Beth Millie. We love you and are praying for you and for God's hand upon each one of you as you process the grief that is inevitable when seasons change. Certain relationships and locational community are lost and each of us is faced with the unknown. Julia and I have not come to this decision lightly. We're finding it extremely difficult to come to grips with, but we are certain that it's God's will for our lives. I'm reminded that God's king and the future is subject Therefore, to quote a well-known truism, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Over the next few weeks, and this is important that you hear this, and particularly people viewing online, over the next few weeks, as we approach the end of our public meetings here in Auckland, I encourage you to pray and consider how you might best move forward by meeting together in small groups, and using the vast amount of resources available through our website. We will complete our study of the Book of Yaakov and aim to conclude Beth Malak Auckland meetings Friday 15 of July 2022. And for those of you who are able to be there for that last meeting, we would like to give you all uh, a gift of a Messianic Sedor um, which you would be able to utilise in your own gatherings and among others who you're ministering to. And at that last meeting, not before then, <laughs> we'd also like those of you who want to, to take away a Shabbat Siddur, um, the ones that we use here regularly, so that you can take all that away as tools for yourselves. Because as I've said many times before, this is a room full of rabbis, and I don't think I'm Jesus, but you are going out into the world. And I don't, I don't just mean the world, I mean into the church. You're going out into a church that desperately needs you. To bring the attention of believers to the Messiah essential faith, to a Hebraic worldview and to a view of scripture seen through the Jewish Messiah's eyes. You're a gift. You're a gift to the body of believers. So in one sense, this is not me or Julia leaving, it's you leaving. And that was something Baruch, one of our, our leaders, said. Is what you're really doing is you're sending them out, just like you sent us out. This is what Baruch said. This is where this is coming from. I wondered where this came from. Baruch on our phone call, he said, look at it this way, you're really sending them out, just like you sent us out. I don't know if you guys remember, those of you who were with us, when we sent out Baruch and Kiri and the kids, we prayed over them, we blessed them, we sent them out. They're running a community and where they are now.
Okay. So, <clears throat> before we get to the questions or the, the things that you guys want to share, I just wanted to remind you and everybody who's joining us online that we do have resources available, and I've put www.bethmalek.com up there. That's our website. There is a lot happening on that website, and it's a place that you can go to for resources over the next little while. And eventually, when the Shemitah comes to an end for me, as I said, there'll be new material coming along. But in the meantime, you have a number of resources, and I just want to talk about those. So there's the commentary section of our website. I've been writing commentary and posting it every week for the last eight years. Probably for some of you, there's a good four or five years worth you haven't come across. If you need something, there's an opportunity to take a look at it. The next thing is teaching videos, and there are teaching videos there going back, I think, at least three, maybe four years. So again, if you miss a few nights, or if you weren't here for a particular book that we study, you can go through those. Then we've got the worship music, and on that page you can play the YouTube um, videos of that music, but much of that worship music is also available on Spotify under my artist account, Yaakov Ben Yehoshua. So if you'd like to utilize that, it's available to you. Keeping in mind that if you get lost and can't find any of these things, email bethmalek at gmail.com and we'll send you a link or we'll answer your question. And of course, um, we have our YouTube channel, and that YouTube channel is under Beth Malek, so if you type Beth Malek YouTube into your Google search engine, our YouTube channel will come up, and again, there are copious amounts of video teachings there that you can go through, and Julia and I regularly get messages from people who are at about the 10th video and are going through them all and saying various things that are mostly pretty cute, actually. Really sweet. But there are people who have just discovered it and they're just systematically going through all the videos from, I don't know, <laughs> 2015 all the way to now. <laughs> uh, they must be on Shemitah. <laughs> okay. Then, of course, there's our Facebook page. Um, and again, there's a backlog of videos on there and various other things. And finally, the podcast. And the podcast has about 31, 32 episodes that you can go through. And my hope is that whilst it will be on hiatus for a while, again, that podcast will start up again. Um, and that podcast is both our teachings done in a concise manner and a Q&A uh, podcast with um, Aaron Ironside, a New Zealand broadcaster, asking questions from the Christian, the mainstream Christian perspective. Like, why do Messianic Jews say this, this and this? Sounds weird. What does that mean? This type of thing. His approach is very good. He uses Christianese so that I can answer that with Messianic Jewish viewpoint and it helps build a uh, bridge between our communities um, i believe one of the other things that god is manifesting in a powerful way in our time is the purification of the bride of messiah and partly that's being done through the teaching of the word and through a better understanding of the person of yeshua the jewish messiah the savior of all peoples and then, as I said, if you want to partner with us right there on our homepage, there's a Donate to Beth Malek ministry, a bank account, and a PayPal account. And we're very grateful to, to those who already support us. I um, want to say thanks to our Australian friends that support us regularly, our American friends, our German friends, those of you who really believe in the work we're doing. Thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to all of you here who have been very faithful in supporting us.
uh, in, I don't know why Julia's telling me to wind it up, but, oh. Oh, sh what Julia's saying is to let you know that at the moment, until our government rocks on with whatever new, <laughs> new legislation they decide for charities and so on, at the moment we can still give you a donation uh, receipt. Maybe a little later on, uh, not so much, but at the moment, yes. So back to the special verse, mercy himself will fight for you all, and you all remain silent, be still. Hey, one of the biggest things that gets in the way of godly rest, one of the biggest things is pride. Pride, pride says, I need to feel like I've earned this. Pride says I need to look like I'm working. Pride says if I stop, if I stop, I won't have a reputation anymore. Pride, pride says if I go away to a solitary place to sit with the Lord, people will forget about me. I mean, in today's terms, if I go off social media, I won't be able to get likes every day. How will the rest of the world that don't care about me know what I'm doing? <laughs> God says, forget pride. Get up this hill here. Sit with me. I've just made a pour over. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's hipster God. Sorry, I got confused there <laughs> for a minute. But seriously, our own Messiah got worn out he just went up a hill. He didn't tell anybody nothing. He didn't stop and say, hey guys, I'm just going to shoot off. He just, he was gone. What did it say? He was up the hill conversing with the Father, hanging out. And he's God with us. He gave us that example. So I guess the challenge to me has become a challenge to all of us. This Shemitah thing, it's Wow, who knew, huh? It means something. So now I want to give you guys an opportunity to, to speak to this. Julia might even have a few words to say to correct, to correct me. No, she's shaking her head, but maybe Bethany, you could be rabbi of the mic. And I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to speak to this. And you might have questions. And... Um, we're, we're going to do a big Shabbat Shalom to everyone online again. Three, two, one. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks so much for joining us. And um, please, if you have questions or things that you'd like to say, email us at bethmalek at gmail.com. Bethmalek at gmail.com. Okay, we love you. Shabbat Shalom.